All right, gonna go through and respond to and refute some uh, common proof texts twisted by a lot of the hyper-Calvinists out there to teach the Calvinistic false doctrine of limited atonement. Now, what is limited atonement? Well, it's the Calvinistic doctrine that Jesus Christ did not die for everyone. He didn't die for the whole world. He just died for the elect. Gonna go through some of the proof texts they like to use and refute them. So first, John chapter 10, verse 14 to 15 says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine, as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now the Calvinists, they take that verse and say, see, Jesus Christ laid his life down for the sheep, but they miss something very important about that verse. Notice that the passage does not say that Jesus Christ gave his life for, life for the sheep only, or for only for a sheep. It just says he laid down his life for a sheep, which I say amen to that. But only he is sheep? That's not what the text says. If you're believing that, you're adding, you're subconsciously adding to the text. And we're going to see that a lot of these texts they just use uh, talk about Jesus Christ dying for the church or Jesus Jesus Christ paying for the uh, purchasing the church with his own blood. And they take these passages and say, see, uh, that proves limited atonement. Well, let's actually look at these passages. Next one they like to use, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Another one they like to twist to teach their Calvinistic false doctrine of limited atonement. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now again, like with the other verse, it's the same situation with John chapter 10, verse 14 to 15. Jesus Christ did indeed give his life for the church. And if you're born again, his blood washes away your sins. But this verse does not say that Jesus Christ gave his life for the church only. Okay, What this text is simply saying is that if you're part of the church, yeah, you're, you know, he gave his life for you. But that would, if it's saying that he gave his life for the church only, that would contradict verses like John 3, 16, uh, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 2, verse 4 to 6, and other scriptures as well. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 talks, you know, talks about he, he tasted death for every man. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6 is another one. You know, it's not saying he gave his life for the church only. See, they have the subconsciously add to the text. So that's another one they like to use. Acts chapter 20, verse 28, another common one you'll see these, uh, a lot of these hyper Calvinists use. Acts chapter 20, verse number 28 says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. It's the same situation with Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Okay? This verse does not, this, it does indeed say that God purchased the church with his own blood, but it does not say that Jesus Christ died for the church only, you know, or died for a sheep, or died for the elect only. It just points out that if you're saved, you're God's. You know, you're, you're one of God's children. He purchased you. That's all that it's saying. Now, another one they like to use, it's to be the last one I'll cover. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 13. That's another one they like, you'll see them try to use. John chapter 15, verse 13 says, greater love hath no, hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now again, every single scripture, it'll be the same answer. Once again, Jesus Christ did indeed lay down his life for his friends, but this text does not say he laid down his life for his friends only. Okay, what you see that they take these verses out of context and they just base their whole doctrine off these obscure verses isolated from their context, but they won't compare scripture with scripture. And they subconsciously add only to the text. Calvinists isolate and rip this, these obscure texts out of context, but they don't compare scripture with scripture. That's what I had written in my notes there. Okay, Jesus Christ did indeed lay down his life for his friends, but his friends only? That's not what the text says. And also on a side note, Calvinists use a straw man argument to try to counter that. They'll say that, well, if Jesus Christ died for everyone, that would mean that everybody goes to heaven, which is universalism. Uh, that's not what myself or other you know, Bible believers have ever said. Okay, we don't say that because Jesus Christ died for everyone, that means everyone's automatically saved and going to heaven. That's not true. Okay, there is a condition to salvation. Jesus Christ did indeed pay for everyone's sin, but there's a condition to salvation, repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 21, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 13, etc. So, and by the way, too, this ties back to the Calvinistic denial of free will. Because if you deny free will, then you're going to teach that the elect is automatically saved. See, it all ties back together. All these false doctrines of Calvinism all go hand in hand. Limited atonement all ties back to the, the denial of free will. Because if there's a condition of salvation, you have to believe and have your faith in Jesus Christ, then it would destroy limited atonement, which says that basically God picks you for salvation against your own will in some cases. 
So it, it all ties back together. So those are some of, those are four common text proof texts they like to use to prove the false Calvinistic doctrine of limited atonement. And it's just it's insanity to claim that Jesus Christ did die for everybody. Uh, it's it's a false doctrine. There's no other nice way to put it. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. It is uh, I'd say it is of the devil because it is essentially an attempt to hinder the spreading of the gospel. Uh, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Don't be deceived by Calvinism. Uh, goodbye. Oh yeah, also too, just forgot to mention this at the end of the video. If you like what we do, you can PayPal us at Faithful Servants 1611. Uh, that's our PayPal domain. It'll be in the description of this video. So yeah, you know, if you like what we do and want to support us, feel free to PayPal us. So just wanted to point that out. Uh, anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.